Hello and welcome. My name is Don Pakella. And I'm Angela Pakella. And this is Welcome to Livingston, powered by the Pakella Group with KW, where we talk about all things Livingston County. Yes, absolutely. And today I'm so excited because Taste of Brighton is coming back. This is a big tradition for our community. And we have Thaddeus McAfee, who's the, a board chairperson for the Taste of Brighton here to tell us a lot more of what's going on. So welcome, Thaddeus. Hey, thank you so much for having us on. Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be great. So let's um, maybe focus on, um, for starters at least, when the event is. Sure, absolutely. So we are coming in, uh, it's Friday, July 15, and Saturday, July 16. Uh, Taste of Brighton is going to run from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on both days. Wonderful. And for all those people out there, I know a lot of people love Taste of Brighton, but some people may be listening to this and be like, what is Taste of Brighton? Yeah, we have a lot of new people that well, have sure, come Sure, absolutely. The and, and it's a newer event in terms of some of the, the kind of key events in Livingston County. So it came from a place of sidewalk sales, right? So there's been some version of summer fests for probably 70 years, you know, and, and it started off as a retail kind of sidewalk sale kind of unofficial cooperation between downtown businesses uh, and and it shifted over the years and you know different people would manage it and different people would run it and it looked a little bit different every year um, but somewhere around 2012 or 2013 uh, so about 10 years now um, a few of us were getting together and kind of having a conversation saying you know so many people we talked to say like gosh I haven't been to Brighton in like 10 years and we thought wow, you know, if you haven't been to Brighton in 10 years, you really have absolutely no idea what Brighton is anymore. Right. Yeah. You know, so much has changed and so much has grown. And there's so many, you know, amazing boutiques and great service companies and just so much food. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, people ask all the time, they're like, oh, what's good in Brighton for food? And I'm like, all of Where it. Do I like, start? all of it. Right? right. Like, what do you like to eat? We have it. Yeah. You know. Um, and so we took the idea of saying, look, let's find a way to bring people into the community and give them a taste of everything Brighton has to offer. Okay. What a great idea. That you is know, that very is really, good. Yeah. And I know with it coming back this year, I mean, downtown Brighton has had some changeover in the past few years. Sure. So it's a new introduction almost. Almost, exactly. You know, it, getting things started again, it was, uh, it was a little taken aback to realize, you know, like, wow, we haven't actually been able to host this event since 2019. Yeah. Wow. You know, and really just getting back into it and getting to know some of the new businesses in town and seeing the restaurants in town. Businesses right. Businesses have opened in that meantime. Absolutely. Right? You know, even through, you know, shutdowns and variations and whatever else we've been trying to live through over these last years, you know, here we are and we're, we're kind of coming back on the other side of it and right. looking at like, how can we get back out of the house? How can we get back involved in the community? How can we just do the things? Right. right? You Which know? everybody's <laughs> starved for, you know, yes. we just... <laughs> All want life to get back to normal, and it's so excited to exciting to gather and to yeah. go to events. You know, I feel like more people are attending things because we've all missed it. Absolutely, we actually saw that we were able to bring back uh, downtown Brighton Ladies Night Out in December. You know, okay. and that was really kind of our first put the toe back into the water. Like, is is are we ready? You know, can we do it? Can we all get back out? Can we do a civic event? Can we have a party? You know, it's one of the things I've always loved about being downtown is we do not hesitate to shut down Main Street and throw a party, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, you know, and, and that's one of the things that brought us to starting this because, um, you know, I talked to people and they'd get off the freeway on Spencer there and they'd come around the corner and be like, what's, why is Main Street shut down today? What What's going on? I, I see the big sign. I see right. booths set up and they wouldn't have any idea that there was an event to go down to. Right. So, you know, that's one of those things of having you on because, you know, downtown is pretty packed on the weekends. It sure yeah. is. Right? right? So for Taste of Brighton, what should people expect? Sure. So Taste of Brighton's our primary criteria for participating in the event. So when you say, like, who's going to be there, right? right? So everyone on Main Street during the day has a brick-and-mortar business in Brighton. Okay. You know, and that's our primary criteria. You know, we don't worry about what you're going to sell. We don't worry about what you're going to cook. We don't worry about any of that. We just really want to be about creating awareness and promoting awareness of Brighton, Brighton businesses, Brighton schools, Brighton culture, Brighton dance. You know, there's just, there's so many things in town, right? right. Yeah. Uh, so basically we get the day started 10 o'clock in the morning and all the restaurants that are there are going to have at least one or two kind of sample size menu items and then a broader range of their stuff. 
Uh, the businesses are all going to be bringing out what makes their shop unique and really letting you see that and get involved and kind of get, you know, roll your sleeves up and see some of the really great stuff downtown. Uh, we've also got great entertainment. We've got, you know, jugglers. We've got living statues. We've got, you know, <laughs> we're, we're bringing in a lot of new things this year. Uh, we're looking at shifting how we did music. Uh, okay. you know, in the past, there's, a, you know, always the live music stages, right? So there's right. live music from five to 10 across four stages. And, you know, we were really kind of sitting back going, you know, there's just so many civic events, you know, whether it's in Brighton or Howell or, you know, everywhere. And, and some of us just kind of, it's, it's easy to fall into habits, right? Right. So mm-hmm. we said, you know what, let's just knock all of that out this year and just do some crazy new stuff. You know, so we're going to have a DJ MC in from iHeartRadio. We're going to have it live broadcast all day from, you know, open to close. There's going to be announcements about what's happening so that if you don't have the map in your hand, you can just listen. We're wiring the whole street with speakers. So it'll just be all going all day, you know, really get and see, you know, who's sponsoring and who's here and who's not and what cool thing is going to happen in half an hour that you should go check out and, you know, who's having a sale on what things. Wow. <laughs> that That's is really cool. impressive. And especially throughout the whole day. I mean, there's always going to be something going on. So yeah. for anybody around town to just tune in and that's going to be a great thing to focus and feature on. Absolutely. We're really excited to be able to just kind of get back out and just say like, wow, we're here. Yeah. Come right. in, you know, and, and we kind of joke about it. We tell the businesses participating, look, we're going to bring 40,000 people in a town. I well, wanted to ask you how, yeah, how you many know, so you're the thinking? crowds, we, we estimate that through, uh, actually we work with Brighton police uh, and, and actually the civic event committee entirely is, you know, there's a lot that goes into making these events, right? right. You know, it's not just like, hey, let's throw a party. Yeah. You know, we start planning our July event in September. Wow. You know, we coordinate with police and fire and public works and city council and city government and, you know, the, the city electrician. You know, yeah. just right. so many things go into making this all happen. Um, but Brighton Police has a program that they use for crowd evaluation, uh, you know, not just for civic events, but just in general so that they can keep a good handle on what's happening in town. So they've come back to estimates and say, you know, we see a crowd across those two days of about 40,000 people in town. That is unbelievable. Yeah. And I guess, you know, that must be like so important to the businesses downtown and to the new businesses. I mean, to walk into one, we had uh, Ivory Vines on our show. Oh, yeah. You know, and to, to say to them, hey, um, you're going to have 40,000 people walking past the front of your shop this weekend. Right. Oh my gosh, how do you prepare for that? <laughs> right. <laughs> right, how do you order enough food? How do you order enough right. inventory? How do you, you know, yeah. We we work with the business owners on coordinating those things and show them some of the, gra- you know, information and statistics, you know. We have people coming in from Lansing to Gross Point to Fenton to Ann Arbor. You know, we have people that travel from out of state every year because it's become such a big event. Uh, you know, we're actually rated in the top three festivals in the state. Wow. Uh, you know, the, wow. the Vote Detroit that comes out every year. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been in that top three category for, you know, five years now. Uh, you know, so again, it's a, it's a huge event. It's getting a lot of traction, a lot of attention, and it's just so much fun. Well, it sounds like, you know, you hit it on all cylinders, right? You have the food aspect, which is, of course, really, <laughs> the, you know, top notch. That's the, that's the top of the list for yeah, me. Let's yeah, yeah, there good food. <laughs> but in terms of the shops and, you know, I guess I hadn't realized that in terms of brick and mortar that there was the involvement of, you know, other Brighton businesses, too, that right. weren't necessarily on the main track. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the things that we, we work hard on is because, you know, Brighton downtown is just amazing. It's one of my favorite places to be. But Brighton is a bigger town than that. You know, it's bigger than I thought it was when we moved out here. Right. Um, and so we bring in people across, you know, from all tracks up and down the road and, and really just try to get everybody involved. I just think it's so amazing because, again, for the festivals and such, a lot of people don't understand the amount of work on the back end and on the front end sure. that goes into creating such a signature event for Brighton and for the county as a whole. Absolutely. You know, we've actually started working with the county tourism board as well and coordinating efforts with them. You know, we've always worked hand in hand with the chamber. We worked hand in hand with the city. You know, a lot of partners have to get involved to make these events happen, whether it's Taste of Brighton, whether it's Ladies Night Out, whether it's, you know, Chambers Smoke and Jazz and Barbecue Blues or Brighton Art and Music or, you know, Bark in the Park. You know, there's, there's so many parties downtown, but all of these stakeholders, you know, there's 30 nonprofit groups that put on events downtown. Right. You know, and that happens all year, you know, and we kind of joke, you know, again, looking back at when we first got started, I had no idea, 
what I was getting myself involved in. <laughs> you know, they said like, you should do Taste It Right. And I was like, yeah. You know? <laughs> they're like, you got your civic event application into city council, right? And I'm like, Okay. My what? <laughs> you know. And that's where it began, right? right? Oh my goodness. Now, what about volunteers? So talking about, sure. you know, how much goes into this, I imagine. And the nice part is here, we're, we're early enough on that um, that there's still some time. So for yeah. people that maybe are new to the community who are listening, right. or even those that just really want to get out and get involved, you know, what types of opportunities are there? Yeah. You know what? There's lots of ways to help. Even just if, you know, if you're tuning in and saying, you're like, not a, I wasn't aware of the event. I wasn't aware of what was going on. Uh, you know, we still have room for a few more businesses. So if you've got a Brighton brick and mortar and you want to come down and be part of Taste of Brighton, uh, we've got some great sponsorship opportunities available to help us make all these things possible. Uh, we've also got volunteer opportunities and we'll have a link live up on our Facebook and uh, webpage shortly on that. Uh, but for volunteer, we always look for help for setup and takedown. You know, again, even just running your business or running your restaurant, it's really hard to staff an entire business and an event at the exact same time. Right. right. You know, you have to double staff. You have to, you know, get more inventory. You have to order ahead of time. You have to, you know, predict a lot of things. And, you know, we're running for a 12-hour day. Right. You know, yeah. the end of that, it's, you know, you've been on your feet for you know, 24 hours. Right. <laughs> and in July, the temperatures are probably pretty. Uh, oh, yeah. It gets beautiful out there. And, and it never rains at taste. Oh, there you know, you right. Go. That's a rule. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not negotiable. It never <laughs> rains at taste. You know, I would say that all those people out there that want to get involved in volunteering, haven't volunteered at a couple festivals. It is a lot of fun. It is. You get a whole different aspect and feel to it and you feel a part of it and just doing some civic duty. And then, you know, we've dragged our kids along, you know, <laughs> National Honor Society. You need sure. those hours, yeah. Boy Scouts, Girl Absolutely. Scouts. Yeah. It's all about getting involved and giving back. It really is. And just as a thank you, you know, we've created our, you know, event T-shirts. So if you're participating business, it's, you know, the black shirt with the Brighton Builds Community, Community Builds Brighton logo. Oh. And then your business logo on the back. But we also create separate T-shirts for the volunteers so that they get a little takeaway from it. And, you know, I know you mentioned Ivory Vines. We're actually working with Ivory Vines this year. I'm really excited about that. She's fantastic. She really is. Love the uh, show. Yeah. And, and over the years, a lot of people have asked us, like, oh, can I buy a T-shirt? And we're like, hmm, well, you can volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> be happy to get you a T-shirt. Uh, but she's actually working with us this month. So if you go to the Ivory Vines page, you can order Brighton, you know, Taste of Brighton swag. So if you want a T-shirt or a hoodie or a coffee mug, you know, again, you can jump into her site and pre-order those, and those will all be available in May. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. See, everybody loves merch. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's, and it's a really cool Tommy. logo. You know, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Right. Um, you know, when we talk about that, you know, all these funds, right, you know, buying these T-shirts, we're funding these things, we're, you know, doing these sponsorships. You know, one of the one of the things that makes Taste of Brighton a little different also is we're a wholly volunteer-run 501c3. Right. So everybody on the board, everybody that communicates and works with the event, all of us are doing this for for volunteer because we care about this community. So every dollar that comes into the event gets spent on the event. You know, it helps us promote. It helps us keep the entertainment going. It helps us keep, you know, the electricity on. Right? <laughs> what know? an asset to the community, though. It, you know, when you think about you. that, that there's so many great nonprofits out there, but. You know, that's something that people don't necessarily always realize that sometimes a lot of those dollars get spent on all the administration. Sure. So to have a cause that 100% is going right back into the community. Absolutely. You know, it does win. it does make a big difference. And it, and it does help a lot. You know, we talk to a lot of businesses that, they say, you know, this is a key event. This is a landmark event for their businesses. You know, so we're, we're helping keep doors open and helping keep people entertained and fed. And, you know, like you said, you know, the beer is your go-to, the food and yep. beer. You know, we... Uh, we also don't run a beer tent, right? So again, a lot of events run that. What we try to do is get the restaurants more involved. So we work with the MLCC and we get temporary licenses. So we've also got this year, uh, Brighton City Council's given us the social district. Okay. Right? So if you're at a restaurant that's participating in the social district and has the right licenses, and we'll make it super clear during the event so it won't be confusing. Right. Yeah. Uh, but you can take a drink from your favorite restaurant with your favorite cocktail or mixed drink or craft beer or whatever it is you're looking for, and you can take it with you 
in the special social district cups. Wow, oh, see, you know, that's so great. You can grab your food, you can grab your drink, you can hang out with the family, you can go over to the inflatables and do the water slide or, you know, the, the jump houses, or you can get into the spider jump or the rock climbing wall. You know, there's just so much to do, and now you can take your food and your drink with you. Right, and what I like most about these festivals for, like, downtown is I can get my appetizer from, my favorite appetizer <laughs> yeah. from bourbons, and then my, my favorite <laughs> burger from, you know, the pound and then right. my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And that's, and, and that's one of the things that we really tried to do. We asked the restaurants to have one or two items with, you know, a one or $2 price point with that exact idea in mind. You're taking the idea of like, I could start at Grand River and for 20 bucks, <laughs> I could wander down to first street and just get stuffed and really try everything. Right. You know, just a little sampler from here and a little sampler from there. And I want some sushi and I want some <laughs> Italian and I want some Americana and I want some tapas. Like I want all of it. Yes. You know, that is very cool. And I think especially since there's so many new restaurants and things oh. like what a great opportunity. Yeah. You know, a lot of people haven't really made it out. And so right. here's a chance to come try it out. And so for some of those new ones down there that I know are still working on getting open, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, hopefully like the slider bar will be open by then. Right. And, you know, it's that opportunity again to check out what's new. Yeah. And and even check out, like you said, from the all of Brighton. That right. it's not just downtown. I was gonna ask about the whole brick and mortar. Yeah. Um are are you guys doing food trucks as well, or is that not a brick and mortar? That's not where we're aiming. Right? And, and I yeah, just, yeah. I just and there are other events that do focus yes. on that, so it's a For great the, opportunity. Now, the there are going to be some food trucks on the street, right? but those are food trucks that are associated with a brick and mortar. Right. Right. So we've got the new pizza restaurant opening up where Two Brothers is, right? So he's also got a food truck from where his events were prior to taking right. and building his own restaurant. and. El Toro has got their own taco truck, you know, yep. so, so they're going to bring their food truck in to represent their brick and mortar. Uh, but we're not, we're not quite at a place where we're looking for, you know, just kind of the independent food truck. We right. really want to be able to give you something where you can come and find it during the event. And then and come, then sit come down back later. to come it. Back. Yes. Right. You're like, this was amazing. I would like more of that. Where can I go? So we yeah. like to be able to show you. That definitely. makes sense. And certainly there's so many events that go on. And I know for the, Barbecue and Blues Fest. I mean, that we were volunteering to that last fall sure. even. But that had tons of the food trucks. So Absolutely. I yeah. think it's nice to focus on different things. Right. That was a great event. I remember, you know, getting having my office on Main Street. It's so distracting to try to do anything <laughs> useful. You know, they start yeah. smoking that barbecue. Yeah. You know, first thing in the morning, you're like, I can't even think. All I can do is <laughs> smell barbecue. Right. You know, like, I'm just yeah. going to close the office. I'm just going to go down there. Yep. Like, this is silly. And you were yeah. mentioning that Taste of Brighton is now involved in the um, a lot of the ladies' night events. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, Downtown Brighton has hosted uh, ladies' night out. We do a winter's ladies' night out. So, it's first Thursday in December and first Thursday in May for spring ladies' night out. Uh, so, those are smaller events. So, it runs that first Thursday. So, it's May 5th and December 1st. Um, and we run from four to nine. Uh, so it's just one evening. And again, just a really great opportunity to come down to Main Street, check out some really cool stores. Uh, we also run that pop-up shop. So the pop-up shop is a spot for businesses off Main Street to come and still have a presence and be able to do some handouts and some takeaways. So again, really just kind of a mini taste, right? right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and Ladies Night Out has some great giveaways. You know, a lot of the shops run specials and drawings and raffles and again just another great evening in town oh it is and it, all of it's a way to support brighton support downtown absolutely and, and i've noticed so often with and i was going to ask about parking in a second but sometimes <laughs> with parking where i'm not parked as close as i would want right gives me that opportunity to walk and say oh i've never popped in here before let me <laughs> go in and check it out so i love that but for this one you said forty thousand people right um how how does that work in coordinating parking then? <laughs> so you thought we had a parking problem, right? <laughs> Let's bring a few more people into town. Uh, so one of the things that we do, uh, especially as we get a little closer, is we'll publish a map of downtown parking available. Okay. So a lot of the times we talk about like, oh, it's so hard to park, but it's really not. No. Uh, the problem is we don't know which way to turn to find the parking lot. So there's actually about 12 parking lots in downtown that are available all year. Now we pack them up pretty quick during the events as well. Uh, but what we do is we'll run a shuttle between Brighton High School or the, the Meyer Park and Ride. Uh, this year, we're also working on coordinating with some of the local hotels. Um, that way, you know, they've got their hotel shuttle. 
We can get a room block rate. So if you want to come out to Taste of Brighton and you're worried you might have a little bit too much to taste and you don't want to <laughs> drive home, you know, pop on a shuttle, go back to a hotel, get a great rate, get up in the morning, come back at it, do it again, you know. Right. <laughs> Whole weekend for it. Absolutely. So, yeah, we do make sure we try to manage parking and work with that, and we talk about it a lot during the event. That's probably one of the things I I answer questions about on Facebook leading up to the event probably more than most other things. Right. Where can I park? Yeah, and, you know, even for walking, the high school is so close. Right. It really is just down the road. Absolutely. Get your walking yeah. shoes on and just enjoy it. You know? yep. And I love that it's such a family-friendly event, too. Thank you. Yeah. So you said there's, like, what kinds of activities are there there for the kids to do that? Absolutely. So we've got two separate kids zones. Uh, and again, we really do try to focus in on that family friendly, right? You know, Brighton's a family town. Brighton's always been about that. So we want the event to reflect that as well. So we've got local dance troops. We've got local, you know, the karate like PKSA comes down and Brighton dance. And, you know, they're there doing performances and, you know, again, just getting those opportunities to be part of that community event. Uh, we've got areas that are focused on the inflatables, right? So we've got a two-story water slide and an obstacle course and, you know, three or four other just huge, uh, you know, inflatable things. Uh, and that's on St. Paul, you know, right by El Arbol and uh, Kobach Building behind okay. the Mill Pond. Uh, at either end of the street, there's rock walls and, you know, the spider jumps. I, I, I've always called it a spider jump. I'm sure it's actually called something else. But you know, it's <laughs> where, you, where you strap in with yeah. a giant rubber bands and fling yourself into the sky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and those are just so much fun. Uh, and then we've got a separate kid zone along that area, along the park, like or along the Imagination Station yeah. through there. And those we have set up try to be, you know, a free area for family. You know, and it tends to age a little younger. Uh, so the bounce houses are free. You know, it's not a pay to play or a wristband. Uh, we have some STEM activities set up. We have some of the schools come out and talk about some of their programs. Uh, we've got, you know, again, just really trying to get the kids involved and give them some educational takeaways, give them some fun educational takeaways, right? Mm-hmm. We're not going to give them any algebra homework. Right. Uh, but, you know, so again, that whole strip back there is also all focused on kid activities. Uh, we also made sure we could bring out our four-legged friends, right? Because okay. families, puppies, too. Yes. You know, you really can't tell the that. kids that, you know, their dog's not part of the family. That's, you know, never really worked for us. Yeah. Uh, so, again, there's a lot of pet-friendly areas. Uh, we got Attaboy training comes out. So they run a little agility course so you can get your dog, get their zoomies out. You know, there's a pet park with some AstroTurf so they can get off the concrete for a minute with fresh water bowls up and down the street. So we really want to make sure that just the entire family is welcome and having a blast of taste. Wow, that is just amazing. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing is, when you think about families and you think about festivals and such, some people sometimes think, okay, well, I need a pocket full of cash to come down here and have a good time. Sure. What I'm hearing is that's not the case. You could, you could spend a bunch if you wanted to, you but you can come have a great time. You absolutely can. Yeah, there's no ticket. There's no admission fee. There's none of that going on. Uh, there's areas that you can get, you can enjoy the music, you can enjoy the mill pond, you can get a great time. There's just tons of people watching if you're in for that. Um, and I know it's still a thing going on. You know, we've got little Pokemon Go charging stations as well. <laughs> you you know, so you want to come out and catch them all. You can do that during Taste of Brighton, yeah. too. <laughs> so speaking of that, you know, over the years, what are some of the more interesting things that you've seen at the event? Or Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, so it was, it was early on. So it was probably 2015. Uh, we had a family come out with their python. Oh, Because they gosh. heard it was pet friendly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's this family and they brought you know, this giant six foot snake draped around their neck and handed it back and forth with the kids. And it would, some people were super excited about it and some people were super nervous about it. <laughs> right. and, you know, just again, just like, OK, this is what the family looks like. Right. Bring them on out. Have yeah. a great time. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, you know, we've seen some more exotic birds come out with people, too. You know, there's always some neat stuff going on with that. Yeah. Absolutely. And even in terms of, you know, maybe some of the younger kids or whatnot, some that have moved away. What an amazing sort of homecoming to come back to. This is the hometown event. This is a reason to uh, just and reconnect. And to even build on that. So the Brighton um, Alumni Association, yeah. you know, they started their annual reunion as part of Taste of Brighton. Oh, my so gosh. They actually great. set up along West Street and did sort of their mini reunion as part of a Taste of Brighton because it, it did integrate so cleanly into that same idea you were just right. talking about. And as their events grown, now they kind of start downtown with us. 
And then their event finishes up at Mount Brighton on Friday night. Wow. No, Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah, well, um, and that's just so cool because I've noticed every time we've come to any of these type of events, it's the people you run into that yes. you didn't expect to run into that make sure. it so special sometimes. Absolutely. You run into people you haven't seen for a long time. You run into people that came home for the summer. You know, it, it, it really has become a destination. So it's a great place to reconnect as well. Wow. Hey, how exciting for the event to come back, you know? Oh, my it, goodness. Really. <laughs> Absolutely. So exciting. And, it, and again, it just gets such a great energy. You know, we've got some new businesses that joined into our board of directors. And, and even those new voices and new energy just kind of revitalize us as a team as we're putting these things together. And it lets us make it a little bit different every year, you know, because as Brighton grows and changes, we want the event to grow and change to reflect that. Right. And if you look at like the, uh, the sunny side of things for the pandemic and such, <laughs> having a year off gives you that perspective right? to be like, hey, these are the things we're going to make it better than before. What have we learned? Right. And, and let's go. Right. It gives you a chance to really think about like, what do I miss? Exactly. You know, what do I want to get back to? What do I want to keep in my life as we're going forward? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Those things truly have value. Right. Yep. You know, even, even for us putting the event on, it was a big deal to, to stop. You know, because we do pour so much of ourselves into it and then taking that pause, getting back involved in it was really rejuvenating, rejuvenating for me and for the team to just be able to say like, hey, we get to do it again. Like, let's go <laughs> throw this great <laughs> celebration. Well, and it shows the dedication and it shows how much you love it. Because for some of these events over the pandemic, you see they come back and they're not the same or you see things or that didn't don't, come back. Don't come right? back, yeah. So, you know, kudos to you guys for putting that energy in and making it even better. Thank you so much. We are so it's looking forward to it. It's appreciated by all 40,000 of us <laughs> attending, right? Like Absolutely. You make a difference. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Now, one of the questions I always try to ask the guests, mm -hmm. you know, each each week. Or, yeah. Each, each week. week that's, what yep. that's what we're doing it is. What do you personally like best about Livingston County? What do I like best? about Livingston yeah. County. So many things to pick. I know. So many. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and, and for me, it was kind of a journey, right? We moved out here when our children were very, very young, uh, you know, and I grew up in Detroit in a place that had a really strong sense of community. Yeah. You know, it was one of those areas where everybody knew who everybody's kids were. And, you know, the McGaffey's were supposed to be home when the street lights came on yeah. and they were supposed to be home when this came on and, and everybody knew and everybody got involved. And, and I missed that. Right. Yeah. And, and I found it when I came back here. Uh, you know, we've got neighbors and we've got businesses. You know, my kids can walk into any business downtown and they know who they are and they know what's going on. And, you know, the neighbors know yeah. who we are. And just it really took a long time. But I was able to find that sense of community again. And it's yeah. been really valuable to me. And how fantastic to be able to give that to your daughters. Exactly. You know, something that you had that you had value in right. and then that's something that you were able to share with them yeah absolutely it's been it's been very impactful over the years you know there's something to be said for being able to walk into a business and they call you by first name right and they, they know your kids exactly and, <laughs> and that happens so much not just to my family but to so many families you know we really get to know these businesses and you know right. take a second to, to talk a little bit about you know shopping local Right. Right. You know, that's really the foundation of what our event and our nonprofit is about. Um, you know, when you spend your money locally, those dollars stay in the community for 12 additional transactions. Wow. Wow. Right. When you spend your money at big box stores, those dollars stay in your community for three transactions. It's a big difference. When you spend your money online, they stay in your community for zero transactions. Yeah. You know, so when we're looking at these communities and we're looking at these places and saying, God, I love this town. Yeah. That support town exists it. because we have the community, because we support it, because we choose to spend our dollars in places that build our community. And I think that Livingston has this culture behind it that even in those cases where the people there don't know your name, boy, they're still friendly like they, they could. Are. Right. Exactly. You exactly. know, they, and they will learn it when you come back. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, you know, kind of the nice part of shopping local and to support local. It's been a pleasure on our um, podcast here to be able to focus on some of these small businesses and, right. and get the word out that a lot of them don't have big advertising dollars. And, exactly, and yeah. And, so and your podcast is a great voice for that, oh, right? It you. really gets into that kind of like one-on-one -on -one dining room table. Like, let's just chat about, you know, what's your business? What's the event? What's going on in town? Like, how can you get involved? Like, I love that that's part of these questions is like, how can we get involved? Because yeah. that's how communities grow. 
Exactly. Yes, absolutely. You know, and it's amazing because what I found through this is there's so many events or businesses that right. even myself that's involved in the community didn't know enough about. Sure. Or didn't know that, you know, I was going into the shop for X, but I found Y and Z. Definitely. You know, and that's and that just such a benefit. so many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. That there's just so many great offerings. And Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. if you're taking a look for what's going on, you know, July is going to be a really busy this year. You know, we've got the 4th of July parade and there's a new, you know, Best of Brighton festival and then a Taste of Brighton and then Bark in the Park. You know, so there's going to be a party on Main Street pretty much every weekend in July. Uh, but if you're not sure and you want to look up the details, you can always go back to the city, you know, city of Brighton webpage. Okay. And they've got an event tab where they actually list out. So it's not just taste events or not just chamber events or not just other civic groups events. So they, they try to put it all in one place so it's easy to find. How that, perfect. That awesome. yeah. yeah. So you can grab that and like fill in your Google calendar. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we might be resharing that on our uh, Welcome on our to Livingston Facebook page. Here. Absolutely. Yes. We'll get a copy for you. Yeah. yeah. So for Taste of Brighton specifically, yeah. again, what are the dates and the times, and then where can they go to find out more information about that event? Absolutely. So A Taste of Brighton is Friday, July 15, and Saturday, July 16, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. both days. Uh, you can find us at our website, which is tasteofbrighton.com. You can also find us on our Facebook page. Uh, again, just Taste of Brighton, uh, and it'll pop right up. Uh, there's a lot of good information in there. You know, you'll see event tabs if you want to get the information for one of our ladies' night or our primary, you know, a Taste of Brighton event. We also spend the year kind of rebroadcasting information about the businesses that we work with through the year. So you can kind of pop in and stay involved about, you know, who's having a sale, who's having a new menu, who's having a new service offering, you know, so you can check in throughout the year to see what all the businesses are doing. Uh, if you go to the website, we break out participation through, we call it Shop, Dine, Play. Right. So if you want to check out the retail stores, hit the shop page. If you want to check out the food, check out the dine page. And if you want to look for local services, you can check out our play page. Wow. That's really helpful. It's nice to kind yeah. of split it up that way, it, too. It does make it a little bit easier. Yes. Yeah. Now, is there anything else that we haven't quite touched on? I, we've talked about so many great things, but I want to make sure to cover things. Sure, first. sure. No, you know, we really have talked about a lot of great things. And I guess the thing that I'll go back to kind of bring back to that core fundamental purpose of our nonprofit is to, to support and create awareness for local businesses. So if you're at a place you love and you had a great shopping experience, you know, somebody was really friendly, they had some really cool products, they had a great menu, the service was amazing. Take a second and drop that note on their Facebook page, drop that note on their Google review, drop that note on their website, because they need that kind of support from us as a community to keep building the community with us. That's a fantastic idea. It doesn't cost any extra money or anything. Not at you all. You know, just po we're, positivity. Exactly. Yeah, we're already on our phones. <laughs> right. <laughs> all, all the time. We're right? sitting waiting anyway, you know. Right. That's just drop a little thing. note and tell people what you loved about the shops. Yep. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. And do you have anything else, Doc? Um, no, I don't think so. I would just say t to everyone out there, you know, please check out the website. Please come down to check out Taste of Brighton. It is a amazing event. Anytime you can get a chance to come downtown, walk the shops, right. support any of the local businesses, you will find so many friendly people for sure to just get involved. But check out our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, anywhere that you find podcasts. Like the uh, Facebook page. Like the <laughs> Facebook page. Go to our website, welcome to livingston.com. You can have a link right to the podcast there as well. So you can check that out. And we just wanted to thank everyone for listening today. Absolutely. And if you've got a shop in Brighton, you want to get a chance to talk to us about participating, feel free to message us as well. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And welcome, welcome to, to Livingston. Livingston.